welcome. Excited to have you all back here today. And I'm really excited for our guest, Sarah Chambers. Sarah is the founder and CEO of Ellie and Nora Creative, which I hope, Sarah, you're going to tell us about that name because I hear it's a great story. Uh, but you're here to talk to us about why personal branding matters. And I'm really excited for this as we move into the nonprofit show. We've done over three years of episodes and I don't think we've talked quite about personal branding. So this will be good for us. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy for having this bananas idea three years ago. She thought it would last two uh, weeks and here we are moving uh, along quite strong. Um, but again, thank you, Julia, for creating this space and place for us to nerd out for the nonprofit show. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group, honored to serve alongside Julia each and every day as the co-host. And we are also honored to have the ongoing support, the investment, and the belief and trust from these presenting sponsors. So for those of you watching, you can see their logos. Those of you listening, I'm going to give a verbal shout out to our friends. So thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Be Generous, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and The Nonprofit Nerd. Again, these companies keep us moving and grooving in these episodes, and we're just so honored to have their support. Hey, I mentioned how long the show's been running. So three years, over 600 episodes. If you missed any of our episodes or you want to go back and listen to what Sarah's going to share with us today, you can find us on Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, and Vimeo. If you're a podcast listener like I am, I was just talking to Sarah about a podcast I was listening to today, you can listen to The Nonprofit Show wherever you stream your podcast. So go ahead and cue us up there. Sarah, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm super honored to be with you today. I am so happy to have you. I know you and I have connected um, probably, it feels like much longer ago. It's probably only but a few months, um, but really excited to have you on. For those of you that haven't met Sarah, Sarah Chambers, founder, CEO at Ellie and Nora Creative. If you want to check out her website, it is elliandnoracreative.com. Start us off, would you, Sarah, tell us the story about the company name. Yes, of course. I, I really love sharing this story because it is such a talking point when people meet me and they're like, hey, your name is Sarah. It's not Ellie or Norris. Now yeah. I'm really confused. <laughs> so um, when I started the company, it all started around vision, like a lot of organizations and companies do. And my vision for the company was to be able to extend outside of myself, to not be the Sarah Chambers creative agency, because I had a vision for team and culture and creating something bigger than just me. And it's really hard for people to really grasp onto something that's someone else's name, I think. So my long-term vision didn't really support using my name. And so when I thought about what do I want to name this thing, what I want to commit to long-term, I really was reflecting on women who had inspired me in history. And so Ellie is inspired by Eleanor Roosevelt and Nora is inspired by Nora Ephron. And I feel like those women have really specific and unique qualities that I thought were very important to the type of work that I intended to do, such as working with values-based businesses and causes. And there was a lot of advocacy inside of both of them. And um, Eleanor Roosevelt really worked in ahead of her time. She was really a big visionary. And Nora Ephron was a brilliant creative. She had the power of wit and observation and she didn't take herself too seriously. So I feel like that's kind of where it came from. And I can lean on women who have come before me to be able to help me create vision as I move forward into what I want to do. Thank you. That truly gives me chills. I know this story's on your website. I haven't uh, seen it on your website. I just didn't dive deep enough, I, I suppose. What a great story. Um, I, I love that. I would say, you know, if I were to, to name my company that, it would probably be <laughs> Amelia Earhart and Nadia Comaneci. <laughs> Ooh, good ones. Yeah, those, yeah. Those are oh, cool. <laughs> I feel so blessed that we have so many 
women to look to, especially as, um, as we move forward, there's so many inspiring people that we can look to, um, to name our, not just name our companies after, but really to frame our lives around. Absolutely. And, and thank you for sharing that. And as we move into this, we're going to talk about personal branding. And now I'm thinking of, you know, these two uh, amazing women that you've named this company after share with us. Let's, let's kick it off here. You know, Sarah, talk to us about why personal branding matters for nonprofit leadership and maybe in particular, the CEOs of the nonprofits. Yeah, of course. So it, and this might not be true for everybody, but in my experience in talking to CEOs and, and high executive leadership in the context of nonprofit organizations, a lot of them see themselves separate at, from their port for profit counterparts in the way that they conduct their business and the way that they show up because they really want to be in service of the organization. And a lot of CEOs feel like if I step into the light and if I claim that space, then I'm somehow removing that attention from the cause or from the organization that I support. And really my message back to that is that this light that we are shining on ourselves, it's not pie. It's not like if I take some of the light away, that that reduces some of the light that comes to the organization. It's actually quite opposite and that people connect with people and not logos and not organizations and not mission statements. They connect with people. And if you think about your, your development team, if you have one, um, that's the reason why we really have to have development team professionals inside of our organization that give your donors and your partners, your advocates, somebody to connect to that they feel I have an in at that organization. It's really the same thinking for the CEO to be, ha to have someone at the highest level of this organization representing the organization as a human really brings connection to the cause, to the organization, to what it is that you're trying to do um, in a way that the organization can't do on its own. And so personal branding is really important part of really curving out and rounding out your communication strategy. So I like to say it's not just a nice to have anymore. It's actually a really crucial part of any communication strategy, regardless of whether you are in a for-profit or a nonprofit organization. And I just think that nonprofit CEOs and leadership tend to think of themselves um, as separate or not really needing that. And that's not true. They need it just as much. I love that. And, and I love that, you know, you're all about this personal branding. Before we went live, I just have to acknowledge the poster behind you or the, the print behind you. Tell our viewers and listeners, Sarah, what that sign says behind you. Yeah, I don't know. You can't quite see it. It says no one is you and that is your power. Um, I love this one. And then I also start a lot of my talks on branding with the Oscar Wilde quote that says, uh, be yourself. Everyone else is taken yes. <laughs> giant I knew literary exactly nerd. <laughs> That's the, that is a, such a good one. And as we move into this, and I, I love that we're addressing this, I, it's so important for, you know, our community members to connect with people, with humans, as you said, you know, and, and that personal branding. Now I've, I've had clients tell me before, Sarah, that they struggle with being the face of the nonprofit. They feel like it's making it all about themselves. So that's what we're going to talk about now is being the face of the nonprofit without making it all about yourself. Talk to us about this and how we can address this. Yeah. So, um, it, this might be a little hard to hear, so stay with me. It was like a little bit of tough love. Um, when people are scared about making it about themselves, it oftentimes is not a fear that comes from taking away from the nonprofit. It's a fear about being seen. And so a lot of the work that we do inside of personal branding is very tactical and is very strategic, but it's also very personal. And so I would invite you to really dig deep um, inside yourself and look internally and ask yourself, am I really worried that I'm taking away the spotlight from my organization or am I really just being afraid to step into the light, to be seen, to put myself out there for fear of what people might say or 
um, for being called out on something or, you know, and it's, it's risky. And so I think that that's primarily the issue that people take, um, even if they haven't quite figured that out or come to terms with that yet. What about imposter syndrome? Do you see that as well in this space in particular with like not wanting to be seen, worried, you know, that, um, I don't know, people might not see me as that expert. Do you see imposter syndrome show up? I think that imposter syndrome is always, I would be so bold as to stake the claim to say that it's always going to be there. We just collectively all get better at dealing with it. So every person that you meet, that you look at, that you're like, wow, they're incredible or doing amazing things. Like it's very, very highly likely that they have dealt with that also. And I think that a little bit of it is just getting out of your own way. And if you truly, truly care about the organization, you're going to want to do what's best for the cause and the organization, even if that means I have to take a risk, I have to step outside of what my comfort zone and I have to be seen. A lot of nonprofit CEOs are already doing this to some degree. They're meeting with donors, they're going to events, they're they're existing as the face of the organization, but in a really controlled environment. And so it's really just about taking that and expanding your reach to digital as well to be seen and have greater impact and greater visibility. And I, I, I'm going back to your pie statement, right? It's like, it's not pie. There's plenty to go around. If it is pie, it's a buffet of pie, right? And it's just, <laughs> it's just going to keep uh, being set back on the buffet. Um, are you seeing that social media, this digital space, as it continues to grow, is that a great place for us to play and be visible in this personal branding? Yeah, absolutely. So it just, I think people get overwhelmed because there are so many different platforms and there's so many different ways to show up and they feel like I can't possibly create content across all of these platforms and show up everywhere and then also do my job. And, um, I would say like, you don't have to. So picking the platforms that are most relevant to how you show up naturally as well as where you think that your donors might be showing up and not just thinking about social media as like a young person's game. I feel like a lot of, I talk to a lot of nonprofits who are not leveraging social in a way that they could be because they have some maybe limiting beliefs around who is on social and the data just isn't supporting that anymore. And um, getting your cause and your organization to be in front of more eyes. This is an incredible time in history for nonprofits to be able to leverage content out in front of people and to get in front of people in a digital space and to not want to take advantage of that both organizationally and as a part of your personal brand feels like a massive missed opportunity. Yeah, I think it could really hinder the opportunity for the for the nonprofit. And I'm curious, Sarah, do you recommend this? I know we're talking about personal branding for that C-suite, the CEO, you know, do you recommend this for all individuals of the nonprofit as well as the CEO? Like what is too much? What's too little? What are you seeing as best practice there? Yeah. So something that I kind of want to pull back to and then answer your question is that I think a lot of times we think about, do I, should I build a personal brand or is that worth my time? And I really want to challenge that belief because the reality is, is that we all have a personal brand. We have one, I have one, you have one. And really the, the question becomes, do I want to let that personal brand dictate what is said about me without my influence, without my input? Do I want to let the narrative create itself? It's kind of like, I talk about it like company culture. You have an organizational culture and it's up to you to decide whether or not you're going to intentionally craft that and you're going to drive that forward with intention and purpose or if you're going to just kind of let it develop on its own, because it will, it will develop on its own. And a personal brand is really just about your reputation. It's about what people know you for. And so people are going to know you for something. 
And you just have to decide whether you're willing to step into the driver's seat of that narrative or not. And that's totally up to you. And so using that frame of understanding to answer your question, everybody on your staff has a personal brand. It's, it, it's innate. It's who they are. It's how they're showing up in spaces, both online and offline. And so I would say that that's a personal decision for each member of your team and your staff to decide if they want to intentionally step into the driver's seat of that narrative. And if so, then it would be great to resource your team and your staff for helping them figure out, okay, if I, if they do want to do that, you know, if they do want to share what their value systems are and what they care about and who they are in a digital space, how can we empower them to do that in a way that might potentially also benefit the organization? Because now they're not just a staff member, they're actually an advocate. Yeah, that is so powerful what you said. It's, you know, we all have a personal brand, a reputation. We can choose to take that driver's seat or we can choose to take that back seat and kind of just let it roll out without us guiding the course. That was so powerful, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, I I truly believe that. And especially because we as people who have deep value, I'm making some assumptions that as the leadership of an organization, you have deep values and deep conviction for the thing that you're doing. And so really what we want at the end of the day is for more people to come along and we want more people to join us in that effort and creating a change or building any sort of sustainability or moving the world in a direction towards our vision is not done in a silo. It is done in the context of community. And when you put yourself out there in a really intentional and authentic way, you're inviting other people to join you in that community and join you in that cause and join you in that effort. And they can't do that if they can't first connect with you. And so personal branding is really about being brave enough to put yourself out there so that people can recognize who you are and what you're about and join hands with you in your effort to make big changes. I feel like I'm talking to Brene Brown a little bit right now. (laughs) I mean, that is probably the very best compliment you could have ever given me ever. I'm going to write that down somewhere. (laughs) Absolutely. Maybe it'll be the next poster. Yeah. Well, and I think too, you know, having that courage, having that bravery, we've talked a lot about on the show, you know, being the face of the nonprofit, you know, oftentimes leaders are tapped on the shoulder and kind of not kind of, they are recruited to another organization. That's personal brand, that's reputation. Um, And so I think, you know, it bodes well for so much. I'm curious if we can talk now about how we should define and can define our personal pillars and get visible with those personal pillars. That's a lot to unpack, I feel, but if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Sarah slash Brene Brown. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness. Yes. So those are kind of two different questions. So I'm going to tackle this first part Um, And then we'll kind of bring it back to visibility. And I'm really glad, um, I feel like you kind of teed me up and you didn't even know that you were doing it um, with the idea that our personal brand um, allows us to be open to other opportunities. So maybe you're being recruited to a different organization. And so that really leads into the idea that you have to have a personal brand that has parallels to your organization, but is not built on the foundation of that organization. And so what that looks like is really crafting and understanding your personal values and who you are as a human and what you care about and how you show up in the world and better understanding that because those are the things that are not going to change for the most part. We're always evolving as humans. And so there is a lot of flexibility, but when you craft a really strong foundation that is built on personal values, that this is what I believe a hundred percent of the time to be true. This is who I am as a human. This is how I exist in the world. Then 
it doesn't matter what organization that you're working with, those values stay intact. And so you can move fluidly throughout your life and yet you can still be continuing to build this reputation. You can still continue to be building out on top of lived experience, um, lived experience on top of lived experience that continues to perpetuate and reinforce who you are and how you show up. And so I think that it's really important for us to craft our pillars for our brand to say, this is who I am and what I'm about outside of the context of our organization. And so deciding who you are, and also that's going to help you clarify what the next best opportunity is for you. Because if you have those clearly defined for yourself, then an opportunity comes along and it might look on paper like a really great opportunity, but if it's not in alignment with your brand values and who you are as a person, then it becomes a really, really profound filtration system for how you can really quickly and easily make decisions about what is good for you. Because you can say, that's a really great opportunity, but that doesn't really sit in alignment with what I want to be known for, what I want to associate myself and what I want to move forward in the world. And so I think that that's kind of the first, the first part is really understanding who you are on your own outside of who you're working for in the moment. I appreciate that so much. And that's, I look at that often with my potential clients. I look at their mission, vision, value statement to say, okay, is this an alignment? Right. But I have to say, Sarah, it's taken me a long time to get there because early in my career and I shared 14 years, right. Are in my, in my business, it was like, you know, money is green and I needed the cash. And so to alignment, I think is always a practice. At least it is for me. Um, but I'm curious if you can now talk about that visibility piece of it, because I know we don't have too much time and I want to make sure that we talk about, you know, establishing those pillars, finding them, being them, and then also being visible with them. Yeah. So that's really kind of the next step. Like you're building this foundation and that's really what we call brand activation. So we operate in two kind of distinct segments. It's the building of your brand and then the activation. And so that visibility piece is really about taking that strategy and what you've decided, kind of what we talked about with building your brand values and executing that in the world. And the reality is, is that there is not just one right path. There's not one way to success when it become, when it comes to visibility. However, I will say that the thing that matters most is consistency. And so deciding where makes the most sense for you to show up again, making sure that you check in with yourself and are aligned. If, um, showing up on video, like terrifies you, then YouTube probably isn't like the platform for you. And there are plenty of others for you, maybe podcasts. So deciding first how you like to create content naturally, is it written? Is it audio? Is it visual or is it in person and really crafting content around how you show up naturally, because it's going to show through. If you're super uncomfortable on video, it's going to look like you're super. Of course you can practice and get better with that intention, but I would say, start with the pieces of content and media that feel most natural to you. So is it writing? You can do blogs. If it's audio podcast is a really great way to go. If it's video, video series is awesome. And if it's in person, then think about how you can craft community and create in-person events that become that anchor of your thought leadership. And then decide what are the social media platforms that can best distribute that thought leadership and that content. So I want you to think about social media platforms, not as the thing, but the method to get the thing out there. And so where does your content actually live? Where does your thought leadership live um, as its home base? And then how can you use social to distribute it? So I would say be really intentional. Don't feel like you have to choose all of the things all at once. Um, decide where your home base content should be what makes the most sense in terms of medium for you, and then choose the social media platforms that are going to be best for you to distribute your message out into the people whose eyes that you want to be in front of, and then make a plan to show up consistently um, over and over and over again, because that is what creates trust and brands are built on trust. Mm -hmm. trust, rapport, that return on relationship. Um, I'm curious, you know, 
With, I feel so many things are so polarizing now, you know, that if we say something and offend someone or or we speak a a political different as someone, um, you know, are we in our visibility, Sarah, making ourselves available for, what do I say, like social attacks, you know, like how do we play safe or do we play safe in that visibility of our personal brand? Yeah. So I think this is going to be like a gut check and there's not like one right answer for every single person, but I'll share how, how I think about it. Um, I'm kind of, I'm a risk taker, (laughs) if you know this about me. Um, and I really make sure that when we're working with our clients, that we are encouraging them to stand in their truth and to stand for, the things that matter to them. And especially in nonprofit space, like sometimes organizations can kind of like not for profit can kind of slide under the radar about, but we actually really encourage all organizations for profit, nonprofit, or otherwise to stand for something, to take a stand. And with that, decide the things that you're going to take a stand on and decide the things that you don't have to, because you do not have to go to every fight you're invited to. And not every cause is relevant for you to create an opinion about publicly. You can hold your own opinion. So it's, I think it's about deciding what makes sense for me to speak on and what I need to hold sacred because we are authentic humans and we have so many parts of us. But when it comes to deciding what shows up in a digital space, we often feel like, well, I have to show every part. I have to show every opinion. I have to show everything. And for us, it's about, hey, if you spread yourself so thin and you share all of these different things anyways, it's not even good strategy because people won't know what you're about or who you're for or what you're thinking or what you do because you talk about so many different things. So choosing intentionally the things that you want to be known for and showing up in those spaces consistently and then letting the rest of your life and your opinions remain sacred um, is really powerful. Um, I will say though that it's really tempting for organizations to want to hop on bandwagons for political and social issues. And so like, for example, we see a lot of greenwashing that comes around when it comes around, like April is earth day. And so I see a lot of that, or when, um, we have a uh, history observance months such as black history month. And so I would actually really invite you to dig deep and take a look at your organization's values and not just what is on the poster in your break room, but how you actually conduct yourself and what your organization stands for. And if you have practices in your business that are not sustainable and that are harming the earth. There's so much transparency in the world right now. And the worst thing you can do is be a hypocrite. So be really careful about hopping on social and political bandwagons. If that's not authentic to who you are as an organization, if you don't have a diverse and equitable leadership team, then please don't post um, on celebrating the history of the contributions of people in the black community. That's the worst thing that you could do, you need to sit down. And so I think that that's really hard, especially for um, leaders who are not in marginalized communities to want to like leverage their community to say certain things. But if that's not who you are as, if that's not how you're showing up to be, and I invite you to dig deeper into that for sure, but really be hesitant to jump on bandwagons and use the opportunity to look inward, to have conversations among yourself, your executive team and your staff about how we can do better in these areas. And then be really transparent about how you're showing up. You have to be willing to take a stand. um, But I would just say, make sure that you're aware and cautious about posting content that doesn't truly align with who you are as an organization or a human. Yeah. And with those pillars and thank you for going uh, in that 
in that direction, sharing that. I, I know now it's such a such a divisive time. Julie and I have talked often about, you know, over the three years, the pandemics, plural, that have taken place. And I just love that you address this, Sarah, when it comes to our personal brand, you know, as it relates to the organization and for ourselves. It's so very important um, to have that there. All that you've shared today has been fascinating. The time has flown by. I just looked at my clock. It was like, oh, no. I have to wrap this up, but I really just want to keep talking with you. So Sarah Chambers, founder, CEO at Ellie and Nora Creative, please check her website out, ellieandnoracreative.com. She's very active on LinkedIn. You can see her personal brand in action on LinkedIn, which I admire and I think is what connected us originally. So thank you for, for this, Sarah. Um, it's been phenomenal talking to you so very much. I again, want to thank Julia Patrick for creating this platform for us to talk about personal branding. And I want to thank our sponsors that allow us these conversations like the ones that we just had here with Sarah Chambers. So thank you to Bloomering, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy with National University, Be Generous, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, nonprofit thought leader and the nonprofit nerd. Sarah, I really meant it. Like Brene Brown is is one of mine. If I had a three name company, it might be Amelia, Nadia, and, and Brene. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It was truly a pleasure. I hope that it was helpful. Very helpful. And I, I know our viewers and our listeners have found it extremely helpful. Hey, if you want to share this conversation with anyone on your team, uh, please do that. You will uh, see us on all the streaming channels as well as podcasts. So Sarah, thanks again for being you. That's your superpower. I, I adore your superpower. For those of you that joined us today, make sure that you are you and you use your superpower. Join us back tomorrow. It's a Friday, or as I like to say, Friday ask and answer. And uh, we're going to have a great conversation tomorrow. Until then, we want to remind you to please stay well so you can do well. Thank you, Sarah.